Good afternoon, everyone. Today I would like to talk about several more different species of birds in unusual locations, one of them being flamingos that have ended up in Russia. It seems to be some sort of geomagnetic pole reversal mix up in the magnetic contour lines of the planet causing these anomalies. This is what the Earth's magnetic field should look like. Pretty evenly balanced between north and south polarity there. Now what happens when the poles start to migrate, or they wandering poles if you will, these magnetic field lines are going to start to twist in on themselves in many species of birds and animals that use the intensity of the magnetic fields to navigate and determine their positions are going to find themselves completely in the wrong place, especially if they're following some type of magnetic lines along the coast or in the sea. They'll become stranded, which you've seen time and time again over the last five years. A case in point, the tundra bean goose. This is from Asia. It flew across the Pacific Ocean and ended up in northern Oregon. It's the first time this bird has ever been seen in the lower 48 states. Also another far wandering bird. This one comes from Mongolia and was spotted in the UK. This is a depiction here from the British Geological Survey of the magnetic field directions in 2010 in both northern and southern hemisphere. The northern hemisphere continues to wander toward Russia at about 30 miles per year, about 48 kilometers. Another rare visitor here in Louisiana. It's the third time this bird's ever been seen. They're generally down in Mexico, but somehow they've ended up and decided to make Louisiana's the new home. The strangest story of all were the flamingos that migrated to Russia in Siberia. This is a look at the four locations where flamingos have been spotted. It just doesn't make sense why they're flying north instead of south unless the magnetic field lines have been twisted somehow. If you continue to do your own research, please notice there are three different models for magnetic calculations on our planet. There's the World Magnetic Model, the BGGM, and the IGRF. This is the World Magnetic Model. You can clearly see that the red is positive to the east and the blue is negative west. And this particular data sets show you where the North Pole is geomagnetically for the year 2015. Same look at the Southern Hemisphere, 2015. Noticeably also with the different types of whales, dolphin strandings, uh, birds out of place, there's been an enormous amount of wild animal attacks in the last two years specifically. Everything from wild turkeys, to bears, to coyotes, to just normal house pets attacking owners and neighbors. This absolutely makes sense. Here's a story about coyotes attacking people in Fremont in a town. They actually had to run after being bitten in the leg back into their homes. This makes total sense. If there are some sort of shifts going on, those animals would regard you as now actually being in their territory. If the magnetic shifted, and they're using field lines to determine where they are, you're actually in their territory now magnetically. Even though it might be not in the same physical location, those animals are sensing that you're in their territory and they are going to attack. And those of you that have been following the migration of the poles, it does seem to have a beeline straight toward Russia going up and it should touch somewhere over a little bit west of the Kamchatka Peninsula. This is the 2015 location. For the Northern Hemisphere, this is the 2015 location for the Southern Hemisphere. And it does show a little bit of slowing in the Southern Hemisphere compared to the increasing jumps that are becoming apparent in the Northern Hemisphere. Now the shifting, as you can see from this graph here, does take an uptrend, almost a vertical jump of the number of kilometers per year since the year 2000. And the magnetic South Pole seems to have slowed in its shifting quite a bit. One thing I did want to point out during the research that I've done for this video, I'm coming across many different types of data sets which show the North Pole for 2015 in three or four different locations as much as 60 miles different from one model set to the other. NOAA made significant linear changes to the pole locations going back from years 2001 to 2010. 
what they've actually done is slowed the movement of the pole from 30 miles to 24 miles and then backdated that information and redid their graphics to show such a slowdown and pullback. When in actuality, it's the opposite. It's starting to speed up. Apparently, it's 42 miles this year. As you can see, the original data set on the right and on the left where the revised magnetic North Pole is. This is some information. I just created this simple table here in about five minutes when I was looking through. I wanted to pull off the latitude in the year so I could put that onto Google Earth and see exactly where it was at this last five-year jump. But then taking a look at the numbers, the previous NOAA data showed 85.7. This one shows 85.1, showing that's exactly what's happening. There's a pullback on the data since that was originally released. Also, when I come to the British Geological Survey, they have the North Pole at 86.07. That's a full degree, 60 miles further pushing toward Russia. Here's an article from the Sea Ice Minimum that occurred in 2014. It is the sixth lowest on record, meaning there were five years with less ice. So this is nowhere in any way, shape, or form the least amount of ice. The ice caps are recovering. And as well, this is from the Global Warming Policy Forum, but they even admit themselves that polar ice caps are more stable than predicted, and the ice is much thicker on the poles. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video.